In Baalbek, Lebanon, researchers are faced with a mystery. Three stones are built into the foundation of a temple that should not actually exist. On top of that, the pillars of the temple are made of a stone that only occurs in Aswan in Egypt, almost 1,500 kilometers away. The transport of heavy stones already poses problems in the present. Stones weighing as much as the largest of Baalbek would have to be lifted by 18 heavy-duty cranes today. Even the components of nearly 100 columns would require incredible convoys of specially secured heavy-duty trucks. But these stones were moved over a distance at a time when there was neither asphalt nor engines. All this gave rise to speculation. Are the stones of Baalbek also legacies of a much older culture that had advanced technologies? Who could really be behind the construction of the Temple of Baalbek? We look at today in this video. Before we get started, as always, we'd like to ask for your active participation. We welcome your comments at the end of the video, appropriate to the topic. All particularly intelligent, helpful, or inspiring comments from our subscribers will be rewarded extra in the future. You will receive a heart from us, and the best contributions will be pinned at the top. Make sure you already have a subscription, like the video, and mention both at the beginning of your comment. The Mystery of Baalbek Baalbek, in modern-day Lebanon, is an ancient settlement that once stood at a major crossroads of caravan routes from the north, east, and south. Over the millennia, Baalbek has been inhabited and transformed by many cultures and peoples. After the biblical Cainites came the Greeks under Alexander the Great, then the Romans. All these cultures had chosen a very special place for their temples and places of worship, a hill called Heliopolis by Alexander the Great. To this day, the ruins of the sanctuaries of the Romans lie there. Among the most stately structures were a temple dedicated to Jupiter and one to honor Bacchus, the god of pleasure and wine. At first glance, these temple ruins look like many others of the Romans. Foundations of stone, columns, chunks of stone lying around, and remains of figures of gods. Nevertheless, the temple complex of Baalbek holds an as-yet unsolved mystery. The foundations of the Temple of Jupiter contain three stone blocks known as the Trilithon. These stone blocks, 19 meters long and 6 meters wide, weigh 800 tons each and are processed so smoothly that no sheet of paper would find room in the joints. In the Baalbek Quarry, researchers found the three other stone giants. Although they never left the quarry, these are considered to be the largest stone monuments ever created and moved by humans. The Pregnant Woman's Stone, the Stone of the South, and the Forgotten Stone each weigh over 1,000 tons. And it remains a mystery to this day how these stones could have been made and moved. We have already dealt with these three stones in detail in another video. Today, we look at another mystery of Baalbek, and these are the stone columns. 100 columns from Aswan to Baalbek? Today, the six Corinthian columns still standing are Baalbek's landmark. Once, they were part of the Temple of Jupiter, which was enclosed by a total of 54 columns of this type. These columns are special. They are the largest erected in ancient times. Each column is 22.6 meters high, and the diameter is 2.2 meters. Thus, these columns tower over the world-famous monuments of the Acropolis in Athens by over two times. Unlike the Trilithon, the columns were not built from a single stone, but were assembled from perfectly worked individual parts. The really amazing thing about this monument is the origin of the stone. Today, we know with certainty that the rose granite comes from a quarry near Aswan, and this is, as you probably immediately recognize correctly, in Egypt. To clarify here immediately the scales, Baalbek is about 1,444 kilometers away from Aswan today. At least, that's what Google Maps says, which today, of course, uses roads that are paved and can be driven on by cars. The Temple of Jupiter was built in Baalbek in the 2nd or 3rd century AD. In the Roman Empire, there were very well something like roads, carts, and certainly a lot of beasts of burden. Nevertheless, the transport of a quantity of stone like this one resembles a miracle. 
not only the material for 54 columns of the Temple of Jupiter was transported from Aswan to Baalbek, but also further components for the approximately 50 columns of the Temple of Bacchus. The load of the stone has amounted to several thousand tons. The stone of the pregnant woman, which we have already shown you at the beginning of the video, weighs a little more than a thousand tons. Here, we show you a picture of a model in Junfran Park in Interlaken, Switzerland, which shows the force that would be needed today to lift 1,000 tons. Now, you can imagine the forces needed to transport stone loads weighing several thousand tons over a distance of 1,440 kilometers. If you've ever seen a Roman road, you know that they were simple cobblestone roads with potholes, grooves, and gaps between the stones. How could the Romans have managed this? There's evidence that the Romans had sophisticated lifting and pulling systems. The way they worked has survived in a few documents. The Roman architect and engineer, Vitruvius, described the pulley system in these words. Two beams are required for the jib, the thickness of which depends on the maximum load expected. They are connected at the top with an iron stirrup and divided at the bottom like an inverted V. At the head of the boom are attached ropes, which are arranged all around to keep it stable. A pulley is suspended from the top. This relief, found on Via Cassia in Italy, shows the technique being operated by two men exactly. It can be used to explain how the stones were hoisted onto carts. It can also explain how the components were placed on top of each other to form columns in Baalbek. Nevertheless, it seems almost impossible to critical minds that the Romans transported stones weighing several hundred tons over such a long distance. It is also a mystery why rose granite had to be used at this place, when stones of other qualities would have been available from quarries far closer. Nevertheless, the stone columns of the temples of Jupiter and Bacchus do not necessarily contradict the human possibilities of the Romans to such an extent that we have to think about the work of extraterrestrials. What can be ruled out with a fair degree of certainty, however, is that the Romans moved the three stone giants of the Trilithon. If you've already seen our other new video on the subject, you may already know that there is testimony that the Romans were overwhelmed with transporting the obelisk of Karnak. It wasn't until Emperor Constantine the Great had the obelisk cut down that it could be brought towards Constantinople. The obelisk weighs a maximum of 500 tons and took several years to complete its journey. The stones of the Trilithon in the foundation of the Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek, however, weigh at least 800 tons and have thus far exceeded the heavy load capacity of the Romans. The mystery of the giant stone blocks. To this day, researchers also wonder why the three giant stones were left in the Baalbek quarry. There are three theories. Number one, the stones could have proved to be too heavy and therefore remained lying down. Two, the stones were components of a much larger monument far before the Roman time, but this one could not be finished. Three, the stones were rejects, broken or inappropriately cut out of the stone. If the stones had really been too heavy to transport, the builders who created them would have reduced the size of the stones and surely used them elsewhere. Once such a block is cut out of the quarry, it is not simply left lying around. This explanation also fits the argument that the stones could have been rejects. Since many of the smaller stone blocks were used in the foundations of Baalbek and in the temples, the workers would certainly have cut them up. While there is currently no real evidence that the foundation under the Temple of Jupiter is much older than the Roman period, it is often speculated that this is precisely the case. Not only the foundation of the temple complex of Baalbek contains stones that were actually much too large to have been transported in ancient times. The phenomenon is also found in the pyramids of Egypt and the so-called forgotten pyramid of Baca. And strangely enough, the special rose granite of Aswan was also used in each case. What these structures also have in common is that their true age and intended use are difficult to determine. It is conceivable that the pyramids and the temple foundations of Baalbek are 10,000 years old or more, possibly the work of an unknown culture. Of course, friends of unusual phenomena have often rumored that Baalbek could have been a kind of landing plateau for spaceships. However, this is rather improbable alone from the statistics and the size of the platform. Also, 
What do we know already about landing places for spaceships? Let's leave these theories aside and look at more natural approaches. Where this stone gigantism comes from and how to explain that people in ancient times were able to transport stones over long distances, where we would struggle today with all of our technology. Here too, there are several approaches. Since evidence has now surfaced around the world that the human race may have produced advanced civilizations long before antiquity and Egyptian antiquity, it is possible that one such civilization was responsible for the construction of the Trilithon at Baalbek. Time and again, it is amazing to see how similar buildings are in this world, created by cultures that supposedly had no contact with each other. At the temple entrance of Baalbek, the trapezoidal shape can be found, which is so not necessarily indicative of the temple construction of the Romans. However, the shape was found in Inca buildings and in Egypt. Contacts between Egyptians and Romans are clear, but how is it that pyramids and trapezoids were also built on the South American continent? Alternative researchers point out again and again that there is a connection between the buildings, which the old established archaeology and natural sciences do not want us to see. We must also be aware, at this point, that archaeology has only been around for about 200 years. In this time, a lot has been excavated, and we have learned a lot about the preceding cultures. Nevertheless, we can by no means know everything and have not found everything that lies dormant somewhere in the earth. Inexplicable monuments, like the Trilithon or the Sphinx, admonish us to keep our minds open and to be aware of always trying to explain everything with known facts. Also, science must leave room for new things. Who could have been at work in Baalbek? We do not know in the end. We only know that the Romans very probably did not build the foundation under the temples. Therefore, it must have been an older culture, and they obviously had a better technique than we even have today. Now you tell us what your explanation is for unusual stone transports in ancient times and for giant stone monuments. Do you believe in the work of a mysterious technology, or can you explain these phenomena quite naturally? We'd love to have your input. And remember to like the video and mention your subscription at the beginning if you already have one. See you next time on Hidden Worlds.